Hello and welcome to this tips and techniques video from Master Your Photography. In this series we've carefully crafted a collection of short videos designed to provide you with key points on specific topics without any of the unnecessary waffle. Our goal is to give you practical information that you can immediately apply to your own photography. We understand that your time is precious so we've condensed each video to deliver concise actionable information. With our tips and techniques series, you'll gain the knowledge and the confidence to improve your photography in no time at all. So that's probably enough waffle, let's get started. In this video, we're going to look at the fundamentals of depth of field, which is quite often abbreviated to just DOF. Now, depth of field refers to the, the zone of what we call acceptable sharpness in an image, both in front of and behind your subject. Depth of field allows you to have some creative control over how much sharpness you actually want in your image. So you may be shooting a landscape like this one on the left, where you want foreground to background all to be as sharp as possible. Alternatively, you may be shooting a portrait and want to actually create some blur in the foreground and background so that it isolates your subject and really makes them stand out. We usually talk about the aperture being the main thing that affects depth of field, but it's actually affected by four different things. Aperture is one of them, but also the focal length of the lens that you're using, the sensor size in your camera, and the distance between your camera and the subject. If we look at these three example images here, all shot at different apertures, then we can see that there's a very distinct difference between the image shot at f2.8 and the image shot at f16. The f16 image is a smaller aperture and therefore it has a greater depth of field, so more of the image is actually in focus. Now this may be what we want, or maybe we prefer the f2.8 image, where we're actually throwing the background more out of focus. That's a creative decision, but understanding how to use depth of field allows you to make those decisions when you're shooting. This zone of acceptable sharpness that we call depth of field always extends one third in front of your subject and two thirds behind your subject. So you can use this fact to gauge how much of your image will actually be in focus. Now obviously as you change your aperture, the total amount that's in focus will vary, but the ratio of one third in front of your subjects and two thirds behind remains the same. You may have heard of something called the hyperfocal distance. Now this is the distance that maximizes the depth of field. So if you focus at the hyperfocal distance, then you will keep everything from half of that hyperfocal distance to infinity in sharp focus. So if we look at this example here, where maybe you're shooting a landscape, let's say the hyperfocal distance is 100 meters then that means everything from 50 meters to infinity will actually be in focus. But the hyperfocal distance will be different for every camera sensor size, focal length and aperture combination. If you want to work out what the hyperfocal distance is for a particular combination, then there are various online calculators and apps that can do this for you. And some lenses do actually have what's called a depth of field scale marked upon them, and you can work it out from that. For portraits or any subject where you want to isolate it against maybe a messy background, then aim to use a long focal length, that's a telephoto lens, and a wide aperture. And this will give you a very shallow depth of field. If you shoot in a landscape and you want to maximize the sharpness from foreground, say, to background, then use a wide angle lens, that's a shorter focal length and opt for a smaller aperture, that's a larger number, something along the lines of maybe f16 or even higher. If you can use the hyperfocal distance as your focusing point, then you're going to maximize that zone of acceptable sharpness, and it's going to stretch from half the hyperfocal distance in your shot right through to infinity. If you shoot in macro shots or any kind of close-up work, then your distance between your camera and your subject is much smaller and therefore the depth of field is much shallower. So what you need to do there is use a smaller aperture to increase that depth of field but be prepared that you may be using longer exposure times or higher ISO settings to compensate for that small aperture. 
it's probably a good idea to use a tripod if you're doing this kind of work because any kind of movement will be exaggerated when you're focused so close in. So next time you're out and about with your camera, have a practice. Use different apertures, use different focal lengths. Maybe try focusing at the hyperfocal distance and learn how you can use depth of field creatively with your own images. Thank you for tuning in to Master Your Photography's Tips and Techniques series. We hope you found this video useful and practical. Remember, each photo you take is a stepping stone towards becoming a better photographer. So get out there and capture the world in your own unique way. Until next time, happy shooting.